Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. This is going to be another kind of short video. Uh, we're going to be doing what states I think are the battleground states for 2024. And when I say battleground, you guys might be wondering, well, what does he mean by battleground? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, what I mean by battleground is a state that is decided by under 10 percentage points for one candidate. Uh, so this excludes a lot of the maps. So we can go ahead and mark off the states that will not be decided, that will definitely be decided by over 10 points for either candidate. Uh, all of these states right here, the Great Plains, the Deep South, um, Alaska probably. Uh, you could even, I, I think Texas will be over 10. I think it'll vote for similar to how Greg Abbott won, maybe a little more uh, for the Republican candidate. I do not think Texas is a battleground. While I think it is closer than it used to be, I do not think Texas will flip. Uh, people keep saying Texas is going to go blue. I don't really think it's going to go blue. The state really saw no shift in 2018, or ex excuse me, 2022 from 2018. Um, and that was in a, an environment where Democrats are expected to do well in Texas, but struggle in the Rust Belt. Well, it ended up being the complete opposite. Republicans did well in Texas, and Democrats struggled in, Rust, in the Rust Belt. Now, it's not really fair, because in 2022, there was no Senate race like 2018 with Ted Cruz. So it's 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 all willy-nilly. But either way, Texas I do not think is a competitive state. 2018 was a fluke. Donald Trump carried the state by 6. I think he'll probably carry it by close to what he did in 2016, maybe by a little more. Uh I guess technically that makes Texas a battleground, but I'm going to go ahead and put it as not a battleground just because, you know, generally kind of like South Carolina, we know how it leans. It's not a battleground. What I mean by battleground is a state that could legitimately go either way. And also decided by under 10. So, I'm going to also mark off the blue states, which we all know which the which states those are. The West Coast, uh, Hawaii, the Eastern Seaboard, most of it. Uh, we can include New Hampshire and Maine at large into this because I do not think Maine at large or New Hampshire will be in play. I think they are gone for the GOP. However, I do think Maine's second district will be red, and I think Nebraska's second will be blue. Also, Illinois and Colorado, and also Virginia. So that marks off a lot of the map. That marks off roughly two-thirds of the map looking here. Not a, not, not exactly two-thirds, but a lot of it. Now, these are not the, the battleground states. Uh, I think, the st I, I think we, more, there are more states we can mark off. I think we can mark off Ohio and Iowa as battleground states. Talking about Ohio, their incumbent governor, who was expected to struggle among Republican voters because of, you know, his because of his lockdown policies, like Mike DeWine was not supposed to win by as much as he did. Mike DeWine, leading up to the the twenty the twenty twenty two Ohio governor election, had a threat of a primary challenger. Mike DeWine was just realistically not the most popular governor. Uh, his approval among Republicans was low. And in general, it was looking like he definitely could be in some hot water in the primary. He won his primary. And then Democrats nominated Dayton, Ohio Mayor Nan Whaley. Mike DeWine went out there on election night and completely blew her out of the water by 25 points on the dot. In Ohio, a state that on the same night, on the same night, on the same night, keep in mind, Tim Ryan only lost by six. The Democrats ran a their best Senate candidate, their best candidate ever, probably for Ohio, for Senate, against a Republican candidate who was seen to maybe struggle. And guess what? He went out there and lost Mahoning County. He went out there and lost pretty much his home country. Tim Ryan's home country voted for J.D. Vance. That should tell you that Ohio is not really a competitive state. The state may look competitive, but Democrats, I think I think it would take a it would take a really good year for Democrats to win in Ohio. It would take a 2018 on steroids for the Dems to win in Ohio. And also generally we're, we're more polarized, so more like the Democrat voters who voted for Sherrod Brown are probably going to come home for whoever we nominate in 2024. Um, I think that will be one of our Senate flips is Ohio. Iowa, it's self-explanatory. Kim Reynolds won by Ron DeSantis margins. 
uh, she also pretty much won by Mike DeWine margins too. Uh, so I don't, I think we can rule out Iowa and also the Senate race wasn't even close either. So yeah, we can also mark off New Mexico. Um, I think New Mexico is gone for the GOP. No need to explain it. I think Minnesota is also gone for the GOP. Again, I wish it wasn't. I, I live here. This is my home state. Uh, I really want this state to, to be competitive. I really want this to be a state that is red. I thought Minnesota would elect Scott Jensen. I thought Jensen had a legitimate chance. Had that election been held in the summer, I think we would have seen a different result. I think Republicans would have probably won it. There was a lot of anti-Biden energy that just kind of died once the, the November came around. I think had the midterms been held in like July, I think Republicans would have had a great night. Because we were seeing in July, special election after special election, Republicans were cruising to victory. We saw Myra Flores win in Texas, which, by the way, she was a disappointment when it's all said and done. But she she cruised to victory in a seat that hadn't been red in over 100 years. We were seeing special elections in Florida that Republicans won seats that they hadn't won since Reconstruction. I mean, it, 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 was shaping up, it was shaping up to be a red wave, and then Democrats started to spend a lot of money. Republicans were underfunded in states like Arizona and Pennsylvania, and also Michigan especially. Um, and Democrats were able to paint Republicans as these extremist, awful people, and voters fell for it. And also, there might have been some other things going on in Arizona at the governor race because the Secretary of State was in charge of her own election. Anyways. Um, yeah, so... Anyways, these are – basically, these are the states that are left. We can also mark off Florida. I forgot to do that earlier uh, because, I mean, Ron DeSantis and Marco Rubio won by double digits. Donald Trump carried the state by four in 2020. The state is definitely probably going to be gone. It's gone for Dems. Dems, could, Dems couldn't even win with a former governor who ran twice. The first time he ran was in 2014, Charlie Crist, as attempt to get governor again as a Democrat since switching parties. Chris lost to Rick Scott narrowly. Rick Scott is like the king of winning by like less than 10,000 votes. That's what he does. Rick Scott is the king of winning by like 1%. He, I mean, he wins. He finds a way to win in narrow situations. So I applaud him for that. Um, but that, you know, going back, getting back on track here. Uh, for Florida, Ron DeSantis won by like almost 20 points over Charlie Crist. Uh, completely destroyed Chris in every matter, in every way. I mean, DeSantis won the Cuban vote. He won the Puerto Rican vote. He won. He won the Hispanic vote outright. I believe he uh, he won the white vote. No no problem. I believe he um I believe the black vote actually got kind of close. He also flipped a couple counties. Like he he flipped he flipped uh Palm Beach and Miami Dade, and also some of the the counties in Tampa. Come on now. I mean, Florida is gone for the Dems. Another state we can mark off, I, in my opinion, is North Carolina. North Carolina has shown that it is immovable. So we go to the, the Senate election in North Carolina. So let's go to the Senate election there with uh, Ted Budd. So at the state level, before we get into the Senate level, Republicans flipped two state Senate seats and won the popular vote by 600,000. On the same night in 2022, Ted Budd won by 200,000 votes over Cherry Beasley, winning the state by 3.2. In 2016, Donald Trump carried, a, carried the state by a similar margin, and in 2020, he won just by two points less in a D-plus-4 year. North Carolina only moved two points to the right in an R-plus-3 national environment, like R-plus-2.5, R-plus-3 national environment. It moved to the right just by two. And in, deep, and in a D-plus-4 year, Trump still won the state, you know, by over a point. We can, con I can confidently say North Carolina is immovable. Y y even going back to 2012, you know, uh, we go back to 2012 with Obama versus Romney, and Romney won the state by two. So, really, the state has remained, has hovered between R-plus-1 and R-plus-4, uh, if you include if you include other races that are not presidential since 2012, it has hovered between one and th one and four points. If you exclude the governor races because it's Roy Cooper, 
But anyways, these are the battleground states that are left. I think that, okay, basically what you are looking at here is, in my opinion, the battleground map. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and then the big three. Basically, like, I mean, you look here. Democrats can win all three of these states, but the thing is, is they have to win at least one, they have to win at least one of the, yeah, they have to win at least one of the Rust Belt states, and keep in mind, if they win Wisconsin, they don't get the election. They would have to win, like, basically, you have to win Wisconsin and one other, or one, or just one. Basically, the battleground states in my, like I said, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, the big three. Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia. These, I, in my opinion, are the are the battlegrounds to watch come 2024. If Donald Trump's the nominee, I could see Republicans maybe winning all of these except for Arizona, Georgia, and Michigan. If this is Ron DeSantis, I could see him sweeping the Sun Belt while losing the Rust Belt. I'm, this is not a prediction video, but this, these, in my opinion, are the swing states to watch. Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which have decided, I believe have voted with a winner every year since 2008. So they're bellwethers. So you need to win them, at least two of them, if you want to have a good shot. That being said, this is the Battleground map. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment down below what you think the Battleground states to watch are, as this is only opinionated. Let me guys know what you think in the comments. I want to hear it. I'm open to other ideas, of course. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.